Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. This is Donnie Bambino, one half of the bad fellas. And you're listening to Cam Crushers. I don't know how you're listening to it, but I'll tell you what, you better leave a five star or I'll come visit you. And you don't want me knocking at your door. Hello! Wait a minute. That sounds a little bit solo. Wait, Sir Michael Jenks? Not. Hey, this is Mark and Mark from Cam Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Sir Michael Jenks is a little bit under the way. When I mean a little bit, he is whew, about six inches away from his deathbed. So give him a huge shout out to get better. We need him for next week for episode 500. Guys, welcome to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And this is riding solo tonight as we get set to cover all out payback and kind of a week of professional wrestling. Be a shorter episode. We're going to power through this and just uh, get set. Lots on the docket for next week, so be prepared. I got a cool spotlight coming up. Won't release it because that's not what we do. We know how it is. This past week, how about Ryan Mosley of the Final Count stepping back on, doing a little uh, State of the Union, I guess, if you want to say, of professional wrestling, what he likes, what's going on with his podcast on the Final Count, making fun of our friend at Ringside Podcast, Daniel Spencer, the head referee of OVW and part of the Impact Wrestling refereeing division as well. So, yeah, it's it's been a crazy week. It has. Uh, Sir Michael Jenks called earlier today. I tried to kind of goat him in to doing a little bit more reached out here and there to see if somebody wanted to join. It's hard. It's really hard uh, to grab somebody without giving them notice. So, touche, bad on me, but that's all right. We can power through this, and I'm excited because it's professional wrestling, and I like to hear my own voice, and I like to talk. So, yeah, hope everybody had a great week. Uh, me, myself, because I'm not going to ruin this. I'm, I'm going to continue this whole process that we do. I uh, had a long work week. It's been up and down, lots of hours, this, that, and the other. But I'm excited because as you guys are listening to this, I'm heading to my first football game this week. Pitt Panthers take on the Cincinnati Bearcats, and we get to start official for myself college football season. Last week we had the wedding. So we went to that and had a great time, grand old time. Um, Had a few adult beverages, so that was pretty cool. Hang out with my family, extended family, friends, and all that. So we had a blast, okay? So there's that. But this week, into football season, as I said. So head down to Pittsburgh and and cheer on the Panthers. I got a lot of hate from some people that I've talked to today. Why are Pitt, Pitt, Pitt? Listen, I'm an alum. I go to Pitt. I love Pitt. That's just, that's just what it is. Uh, hail to Pitt, UPB, Pitt Bradford, where I actually graduated from. So, yeah. Did you guys get to play any of – because I, I poo-pooed this last week as well. Did you guys get to play any of the Fight Forever with Keith Lee and Bunny? Uh, I literally found it – an hour prior to recording because I thought they just uploaded themselves. Essentially, once you buy the almighty, holy moly fight forever package that I bought when when the presale was out, no, you still have to go to the store and download it. Listen, I love the game for what it is, fighting, wrestling, all the cool things. Just bugs are now starting to bug me. 
no pun included. Uh, they're just starting to get under my nerves that you have to go in and get this package. Even though I have the super, 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 super package that I bought, that everybody essentially bought, I didn't know you had to go into the store and then download them. Like, they should just do that already. Um, they're still really sucking at the Stadium Stampede. The ball, though. I, I really... It is for if you have not played it yet because maybe you don't have the game or you don't have the internet webs hooked up to it or anything like that, and you know kids that play Fortnite, it is Fortnite on crack, essentially. At least to me, a 46-year-old. I know Fortnite has really done a lot of things since the last time I've seen my son play it. He's now transitioned away from it into other things. But for me, it's wrestlers that I know. Now, personally, some personally, maybe not. And it's just really cool to be riding a horse and kick people or shooting them with T-shirt guns and everything like that. My best finish was six so far. So I'll take that. I'll take it because I don't play 24 hours a day like some of these people that are snipering me with a T-shirt gun from out of nowhere. And, man, the the golf carts are crazy as well because it took me a long time to find out where they were hidden. And then I finally found them. Somebody was already in it and ran my ass over though. It's just one of those and it's cool. So that's that. Um, Before we go any farther, I do want to kind of pause right here earlier in the week, lost yet another legend in professional wrestling as I, I believe most of kind of Can Crusher's audience will remember him as Sheik Adnan Al Casey or Sheik Adnan that came out with Sergeant Slaughter in that turn when when Slaughter went, you know, the whole heel rogue. Um, also was, uh, why, why can't I remember, Billy White Wolf, I believe what it was. It, so, done a lot in professional wrestling. And he was just, as Sheik Adnan Al Casey and then Sheik Adnan with Slaughter, just did so many heelish things that then you brought the Iron Sheik in with him as well. Like, I really enjoyed walking, watching his managerial moments in professional wrestling. I, I really do. Uh, it's it just, man, this year's been rough. This, this year really has been rough, so if you haven't watched any Chic Adnan stuff, make sure you go out there, and as we always do here on Can Crushers, we'll raise our beer to Chic Adnan. Rest easy, Chic. So, hot topics. Hot topics of the week. Well, CM Punk got fired. Last week, we he was he was suspended. And right before All Out and all of that, was it All Out or what? Yeah, again, my week has just been a conglomerate of Monday through Friday. I don't know what day is what, what day is where, whatever. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, Tony Khan comes on and kind of makes that announcement. Some, and I want to stir the pot. I really do want to stir the pot with this. So I I want a little bit of feedback from you guys so drop it in either the comments where you see it on Facebook or drop us an email at cantcrusher69 and email at gmail.com. Or when you call in to give our congratulations for episode 500 next week, bring that up too because we'd love to banter a little bit more about that. Um, by the way, Sir Michael Jenks, he better be you know taking care of his pipes with Ricola or something like that, so he'll be able to come on next week. Because if he doesn't come on for five hundred, woof, he he might be fired. He he might be fired. I'll just put it that way. He's not going to be fired. He's not going to be. But it would be really sad. We'd have to bump five hundred or something. With that, this, these are all things that run through my head. These these are the things that keep me awake. I'm like, holy man, I don't know what's going on. What how how can I fix this? That went through my head today when I found out that he was sick. But to stir the pot to get back to CM Punk a little bit, some still say it's a work. That this is a work for AEW. Punk is hurt yet again, and he needs more time off. And as you heard, if you listened to Wednesday's episode, I know Ryan and I don't think it's a work at all. I really don't. And more and more since Tuesday when Ryan and I recorded... More and more has come out that 
it may be a strong possibility he is going back to WWE in time. I'm not going to say any time like lickety split or maybe even like Royal Rumble. I think this would be a huge surprise. I'm putting it WrestleMania. I I think that would be that would be the moment. That would be another moment. If bygones can be bygones, and listen, you've seen it all in professional wrestling. Hogan and Warrior and Bret Hart. And listen, the list goes on and on and on of ones that happened prior to us and prior to the internet and everything like that that we know. It's it's about the dollar and it's about what makes you holler. God, it's either going to be one of those episodes or this is going to be like, Mark, shut up. Mark will probably shut up because dollar holler, I think of Teddy Long then. However, I really do think Punk will end up in time back in WWE for a a hot minute. I really do. At least one more run to maybe wrap up his career then. I want to hear what you guys say. I really do. So for next week, this is you guys' homework. This is the one hot take I have. This is your homework for next week to get your thoughts in on CM Punk. Like I said, either email or drop it when you guys call in. And everybody's allowed to call in. So we, we've had many now call-ins. That they're all set away to the side on, on my desktop. I can't wait to play them when next week comes around to see who called in and everything. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. All right, guys, I do want to talk about eating, cr- I mean, payback and all out. Little subtle hint there. As last week, we're like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Back to back pay per views for AEW. Throw in a what we thought was a throwaway pay per view for WWE. Yeah, man, crow. I got two servings of it tonight because Sir Michael Jenks isn't here. That's why he's not here. It's not that he's sick. He doesn't want to eat crow with me. He doesn't want to eat crow whatsoever. All right, guys, we got to tell you all the things that we do here on Can Crushers. We've brought up the email before. Again, if you're a wrestler, you want to be on the show, you want to come on, do a spotlight, anything like that, you guys have questions, anything that you want to use emails for uh, legally and, you know, not being a royal douche about Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Reach out to us. We'll interact. We'll get some stuff going. We're also available on socials. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you guys. I'll I'll probably call it Twitter the rest of my life. And threads. Reach out. Get some stories going there. Get some interaction. Meet some other people in Cancrusher Nation. You know, it's pretty cool to chat. And I know. I'm acting like a 46-year-old man tonight. Or maybe even me like a 76-year-old man. It's really cool just to interact with other people on our sites and everything to say, hey, what did you think about this? What did you think about this? Trust me, I govern it. So I watch. If you're going to start, you know, hate speech or bullying or somebody, gone, see you, bye. We've done it before. We'll continue to do it. This is wrestling. It's supposed to be fun. So, yeah, head into our socials. Where you can listen. Well, wherever you're listening right now is probably one of your favorites, right? I would imagine, but people do float back and forth. So iHeartRadio, Stitcher, BoxCast, Podchaser, IMDB has us, Spotify, iTunes, Alexa, Google, all of those. But you can also go seamless, essentially, where you can just drag everything right along by downloading the Podurama app, app, Podurama app. See, this is where I normally need Michael Jenks to uh, laugh at me or get something going about Podurama rap because now we'd be like rapping or anything. But Podurama, right now, they are offering 50% off if you buy the lifetime membership, and that's really cool. Podurama, it's seamless from Androids to Apples to, you know, any any phones that are out there. Those are the two serving, the, the, the two services, essentially. But it goes right from your phone to your laptop to your computer to Alexa. Wherever you're listening, everything just controls seamlessly, and you'll be able to ride right along with that app, and it's really cool. It really is. I've actually been using it a lot recently on podcasts that I listen to from when I'm in the garbage truck or when I'm leaving work, getting into the car, and 
continuing stuff like that once they get home to play it as I'm showering or whatever. Podorama is actually really cool. It, it really does what you need it to do and just slaps everything together for you. So make sure you go out there. Give, give them a try. Really, give them a try before you sign up for the lifetime membership. And, yeah, again, we're linked right alongside Busted Open, Jericho, Stone Cold, all of the big ones right on Podorama because they know. They know Can Crushers still knocking down walls, kissing babies, high-fiving everybody, taking over names because they know Can Crushers on the roll. All right, guys, another thing I want to tell you about real quick is collar and elbow. I'm going to give Al Snow some proper time tonight. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans have down at Collar and Elbow. Buy it. Buy it. There's so many awesome shirts out there that are just so comfortable. I'm telling you, the fabric is so soft and everything like that. You're like, Mark, this isn't you. This isn't the way you talk. Go back in way time. We we really, really talked up these shirts way, way. The English professor used to say it makes his wife happy because he looks so good in them. They do. They, they're, they're perfect shirts. I've had one for years now. You would think it's a brand new shirt. It, it's just amazing. And that's my property of, um, property of collar and elbow shirt. That's one of the first ones I got for, for doing this with Al. So, yeah, get ready. When you check out, though, you want to save 10%, use our promo code. It's Can Crushers, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, all one word, will save you 10%. It's like you're getting shipping, essentially. And that's cool. Anytime you can save money in today's day and age is really awesome. All right. Let's knock this out of the park. And essentially, let's do WWE first since Payback started. So next episode, next segment, Mark, God, get your shit together. Next segment, we'll go WWE first. Talk about the first pile of crow they're going to eat today because payback was a banger wrestling a love and a passion we all share i've started a wrestling brand the wrestling brand a brand founded on the aspects of wrestling two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, riding solo tonight, doing a little bit of the dirty work here in Can Crushers, picking it up where everybody drops it off. I'm kidding. I love you, Sir Michael Jenks. I know you're going to listen to this tomorrow morning as I'm on my way to Pittsburgh. And you'll be like, man, why are you throwing me so much hate? Because, listen, this man, uh, you know Darth Vader. Oh, God. I am your father. He sounds worse than that. And that's even a worse impression uh, of what I had. So he's resting his cockles if you're just joining us here in the second segment. I don't know how people do this, though, if you join us in the second segment and then go back and listen to the first and then to the third or whatever. But I do know. No, I, listen, I, I would imagine. Maybe you just don't want to hear myself talk about that I'm going to a pit game or I'm playing football or wrestling or something. So you guys just know. Skip to the second segment because they're actually going to start talking wrestling there. But I also know people don't only listen to the first segment my wife, so then see what I spill the beans on, on stupid stuff. So maybe without Sir Michael Jenks, I won't get in trouble this week by spilling anything stupid. But, all right, let's jump right back in to wrestling. Mark, get yourself together, and let's talk about payback. Guys, last week, Sir Michael Jenks and I were like, oh, man, what is going on? What What is this going on? 
by the way, uh, title wasn't on the line or anything like that, but we knocked both pay-per-views kind of out of the ballpark. We, we did really well. Um, I did a little bit better than him. Of course, it was a non-title match. That's why. A non-six-pack match. That's why. It's coming. Maybe Grand Slam. That's when I get my six-pack back from Sir Michael Jenks. If he's if he thinks I'm worthy enough. But again, payback. I will say this. And you guys know how we are here on Can't Crush Wrestling Podcast. I'm really disappointed in the WWE. That and I know there was titles on the line, this, that, or the other, that they didn't give Becky and Trish the main event in this pay per view. I really am disappointed in this. They took them off of SummerSlam essentially. They never said it was going to be on SummerSlam, but listen, this is a SummerSlam caliber match that they essentially took off. And moved it to, I don't know, it was first going to be on Raw, and the shenanigans happened. So they put it on payback. And we have talked about how the first match can be the match of the night and everything like this. I still think this would have, as Jenk says, cooked if this was the main event. And I'll wave that flag. I want to see what pay-per-view now coming up. They will give the women... A pay per view. Will it be Fast Lane? Will it, be, uh, it probably won't be a Survivor Series because Roman will be back essentially by then. I I don't know, but this was your time to give the women the main event. Why not have Seth and Shinsuke go first for a title match? We've seen that before, and I don't know what's going on outside. By the way, no clue. I don't know. Maybe a big pop of pumps coming, but. Uh, uh, I'm happy about this match, and I love everything about it. But I knew something was going to happen because you don't show Tiffany Stratton for nothing. Okay? So this was leading into something. And as we talked about the Monday before, Becky already beat Zoe and Trish essentially by herself in that Falls Count Anywhere, no disqualification match they had on Raw. So if you didn't think Beck was going to win, didn't think Becky wasn't going to win this match, you're kind of crazy. She turned into Beck Lesnar, by the way, with the amount of suplexes she had in this match. Starks comes out, causes a distraction. Becky gets the win. This was, to me, the match of the night. Right in my notes, I said, I would not want to follow this. I don't know how they're going to do this. What are they going to do? Because this... This was the end-all, tail-all of this feud. And it essentially set up something else for maybe down the line. Maybe Trisha's not done. I mean, we'll get the Raw here in a minute. But maybe Trish isn't done. Or maybe she comes back in a little bit when Zoe has more of her feet underneath her. Not she doesn't have her feet underneath her, but you know what I'm saying. More of a push, more of a, a notable match or something like that where she's in that championship hunt and Trish causes her and we get more Trish. I don't think Trish is back to being retired. I don't think we see her again for a little hot second, but I don't think she's completely gone from WWE. However, this match itself between Becky and Trish stole the show for me. Stole the show. I I loved everything about it. The storytelling within the match and within the story was just great. If you've not seen Payback, by the way, and you've only listened to the show saying, wow, these guys really shit on it last week. Well, now I am not. I am not. Because I have Crow in front of me. Payback was amazing. Maybe not amazing, but it was it was definitely better than I thought. It was a good to great pay-per-view from what we were actually thinking. Next matchup is Miz and L.A. Knight. Cena is the official, and this was another good match. I, again, there's not much I don't, there's not much that I hate on this pay per view. I'll leave it at that because I, I really love this. You got a little bit of a moment at, at the end with LA Knight and Cena, 
you really think that's going to come to fruition soon? I believe it is. I believe it is. That's going to kind of give them that rub. You got the whole L.A. night, the Cena, the Rock, the Stone Cold, all of the things that everybody compares L.A. night to. You got all this in that match. And it's because, here comes the hate, he's working with one of the best in the business. Love him or hate him, and I've said this for a long time, because he's awesome. Miz is already a Hall of Famer. Miz definitely already is a Hall of Famer. He's just adding accolades. Not those accolades, but he's just adding accolades to his resume. And there may be subtle accolades that you don't know, like giving L.A. Knight the rub or giving so-and-so uh, a title or whatever. Miz is there because he's an A-lister and he puts people over. He'll, he'll do nonsensical feuds. He'll do – listen, Miz TV is definitely not one of my favorite segments on any TV let alone WWE TV. But he does what he needs to do. That's what it's about. Miz just runs with everything that WWE feeds him and says, here, run with this. So I'm excited about it. I I, I am. This match was great. Uh, again, it looked easy to these guys. It really did. Theory and Ray, U.S. title match. Quick match. Nothing to write home about. Nothing to really shit on it about, essentially. It was a raw main event match. Just pumped up a little bit more. Third match on the card. You know, sometimes this is where you get that popcorn match. You get the bathroom break match because you know something else is coming. This, yeah. Uh, We've been saying here on Can't Crushers for... I don't know, a couple weeks to a month now, Ray and Santos is what we want. We need to transition over to that. We want Santos a- as U.S. champion, but we think something more is going to come out of Ray first and Dom. That story is not wrapped up. So there's there's legs there. Could he lose the title to Santos and then get the whole Dom thing going again? Yeah, yeah without a doubt. Without a doubt, he could do that. It, it wouldn't be a problem. I just, Ray needs to get into this. And in theory, not not in theory, for theory, essentially, he, he's ready to move on too. He is. I, I think he's on to bigger and better things because he did well with the U.S. championship. I, I loved his run. I, I did. It, it was good. The couple runs that he had, he can move along, get something else big underneath him, and, and roll with it. You see Becky backstage. And that's where the whole Trish, uh, Tiffany Stratton kind of intermingles. And she dropped down, essentially. Becky showed up on NXT on Tuesday. So once Stratton said, hey, I was here to congratulate some of the former NXT champions, or I did the other day on TV, and I brought up your name. Well, I want to apologize because you never were a former champion. Listen. Becky's going to have that title probably by the end of the year. I I, I would say this. Becky's going to have that title by the end of the year, essentially making her, uh, I guess, for the women, a Grand Slam champion then as well, right? Because everybody's had it. So, yeah, it's something that she has not had. It's another accomplishment to get her to be compared to Flair or to Bailey. To Sasha when when they were all around. So, yeah, why not? Be- Becky, why, let her run. It also is a way to transition, I think, Tiffany Stratton to the upper level then. Becky can run with the title, I don't know, maybe the next pay-per-view NXT has until Rumble and they maybe drop it to somebody else. There, there's a lot of great women on the NXT. Um, still would love to see... There's three in NXT right now. I really want to see sniff a title. One being Pittsburgh's own Thea Hall, Hale. Hall. Thea Hale. Gigi. I, I know Gigi having her issues right now. But Gigi and then JC Jane. 
those three, I think, can run. Uh, would it be Thea? I, I don't know if Thea is going to be the youngest ever to hold a title. I, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to sit back and see what Nikita Knight does, or Thea Hale does, essentially. But, yeah, the Pittsburgh street fight. Man, this was WWE's answer to the stadium stampede. That's what I that's exactly what I felt. I didn't know it was a street fight until I watched it on TV. No clue. Uh you guys can yell at us because I don't I don't think we we called it a street fight last week when we were making our predictions. If we did, I don't remember. I don't remember Jenk saying that. I, I really don't. So they made it a street fight, and they they fought all over the PPG arena. It, w- it was great. It, it was awesome, except for one part. Fuck Finn Balor. Fuck him. Stomping on a terrible towel. Huh. Bum. I will say, though, this was Corey Graves' greatest announcing, broadcasting, match of his life. He brought in all the Pittsburgh isms that you could. Myron Cope, hockey with Lemieux and Crosby, other members of the Penguins, brought up the Pirates, j- just brought up where he went to eat in the morning. I was shocked that like Permani Brothers didn't deliver something to him. It was a huge marketing ploy for Pittsburgh. And I'm a homer. I enjoyed Graves on this. They let him cook, as Jenk says, and just he ran with his hometown. He was sterling over this. He was amazing. Awesome. But the the match itself, (sighs) when they had the Pittsburgh jerseys on of Lemieux and Crosby, in my notes I said, Clearly losing the titles now. They got their pop from that in Pittsburgh. And that, to me, was when I knew Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens were losing the titles. Was I okay with it? In the scheme of things, yes. I really was. Why, you say, Mark? I say because I think Sami, again, watch Raw, we'll get to it, and Kevin are far enough away now of the whole bloodline thing that they can trickle on there. At least I thought. At least I thought. This was, again, Saturday. And I did watch this before I watched Raw, so don't give me any hate. Probably about two hours before I watched Raw. This was my Labor Day. This was my Labor Day stuff. They're far enough away that they can be split up now. They can. It's not that they're not friends or besties or anything like that. Kevin needs to be main event again. And I think we're going to slowly trickle there soon. Especially with the back injury to Seth, Nakamura, and Priest being, I think, number one, number two contenders, essentially. You have Gunther out there. More on him to come in a minute. If you listen to Wednesday, you know that I'm salty about something. But yeah, uh, everybody, everybody and their brother from Judgment Day came over and helped. It was 27 on 2, essentially. I did like that Madonna took a bump to actually help Judgment Day. And as I said, they are getting over with me. I'm slow to the race. I'm probably just starting. And Judgment Day is on its way out, essentially. How soon? Well, time to be tell. They have tag team championship. Senior has a new briefcase. You know, we'll we'll have to see. But I'm late to the party. And man, is this not Rhea's Rhea's group to run with? This is unbelievable. She makes the decisions. Balor on paper is El Presidente. Senior Priest is probably number two. But puppetry from Rhea is everything. And you see it with Dom. And I think you're going to start seeing it with the other two as well shortly. I think this is a short tag team title run for those two. And then Rhea starts 
doing a little bit more Puppet Master on the other two as well. And McDonough, he could certainly be a big part, the wedge, I guess you want to say, in all of this. And then maybe we'll have a different feud. Great match, though. Great match. I love their kind of answer to Stadium Stampede. Then we get to the Grayson Waller show. Of course, I have no time to drink here, so I'm going to take a drink. Hold on. We get to the Grayson Waller show. We predicted Cody was going to have a match with Grayson Waller then. Cody was out. He made some phone calls. He's bringing back Jimmy. Jimmy Uso. Now Raw. There's some things that I question about this. Why does he come back for Cody Rhodes? Is he for Cody Rhodes? Is this a ploy about other things to happen? Is this a scheme by the wise man? Because Cody needs to start, I think, to sniff. We're, we're in a... A rough patch of WWE, as we always say. Uh, Essentially, right after SummerSlam, the way Survivor Series, which is the next pay-per-view, is not as big and prestigious as it is anymore. We'll have to see. You know, November, December, even or October, December, uh, sometimes even rougher. But we poo-pooed payback, payday, whatever it's called. So I think this is where you start getting the subtle hints that Cody is now on the rise again to get to Roman Reigns. Is it going to be at WrestleMania? That's another question I have for you guys. Is Cody going to get the title at WrestleMania? Or is there a bigger match out there for Cody at WrestleMania? I'll leave that. Sit, simmer, see what you guys cook on that, essentially, I'm going to use all Jenks' terms this week just to piss them off, by the way, to let that sit and simmer for something bigger at WrestleMania. Does Roman lose the title at the Rumble? At those Thoughts. Thoughts, folks. This, this really is stuff that keeps me up at night. It really is. So Uso comes out, and Waller, you know, pokes fun at him, and then he eats a super kick. If there's a match of the night that was maybe a little underwhelming, I will have to give it to Rhea and Raquel. I just don't know about Raquel yet. And again, it might be me. Rhea, big, brutal, all of that. Raquel, I just don't think was built back up to be that Strong woman, essentially, with the air quotes around it. I, I don't know. She's been very tag team heavy recently. Live, live, live. Whoever else is a partner. I don't think she's been built back up that much. So to get this title shot, I was expecting more. And I know they did do it a little bit. That Rhea kind of snuck out with the victory. She also had help from Dom. That's the way that she wins matches. Help from the Judgment Day. So everybody's like, well, when when is she actually going to win a match by herself? That's not her story. You're not going to get that story in this title reign. All of these are going to be because of this, that, or the other. More on that again, coming to Raw. But I, I just, I wanted more from Raquel in this match. I really did. Overall, though, good match. Uh, not a lot of hate this week, by the way. Not a lot of hate on anything this week. I just wanted more. Then we get to the main event. Seth against Shinsuke. Mood is in the crowd. That was kind of released earlier in the week. We kind of played around with it. Is he going to do something? What's going to go on? Is Muda going to get in uh, one more match? He had his final match. What's going on? I, I, I just, I didn't understand. And I know, you know, they talked about Muda on, on the broadcast and everything. What's the payoff of this? What what is the payoff of Muda being there if it, it doesn't resurface and resurface sooner than later? As you guys all saw after 
essentially the broadcast went off the air and Seth was celebrating his victory over Shinsuke after being beaten down and all of that. He just finds a way, the will to win, this, that, and the other. Great story. Shinsuke attacks him again and leaves him essentially brutally beaten in the ring. More on that on Raw as we transition over to Raw. So overall, I'm eating crow. I didn't think it was going to be this good. I didn't think they were going to put as many stories into this. I thought it was going to be more one-offs. I didn't think Shins was going to possibly get a rematch. I thought this was just going to lead to something else. But let's go over to Raw. Let's, Let's trickle over to Raw from North Carolina. I know it's not. The beginning was really long on Raw. Sometimes, most of the times in WWE, more is less. More is less. Jay starts a show, Cole gives him credit, and then, and then Michael Cole. Cody came over from a place that he was an EVP. I love those little shots. I love those little shots. What did it really do? Everybody knows. Everybody knows. But it acknowledges. He acknowledges me. He acknowledges you. He acknowledges Roman Reigns. He acknowledges my dog, Max. At least play that game. Play that game. And at some point, all hell breaks loose. Because Sami Zayn comes out. Drew McIntyre comes out in this match. It it, it just... It was really long. Sammy was happy he's there. You you thought I did you really think that they were gonna squabble? I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't think he was gonna attack him. But he did say, Hey, I wasn't feeling oozy. They hug it out and yeah. But they run into Drew when he comes out. Because Drew's getting set up for him and Riddle against the Vikings. But again, when they come back from commercial, Adam and Ricochet are talking, and Seth says, I'm here, I'm here. Adam's like, you're not supposed to be here, you're supposed to have a day off, this, that, and the other. So we're going to fast forward. Uh, Essentially, Shinsuke attacks Seth again, because Seth has called him out, saying he wants a rematch, here's a rematch tonight. Shinsuke says no, this, that, and the other. So we're going to get another Shinsuke match, Shinsuke-Seth. Is this where Shinsuke pulls it off? Or is this where the Judgment Day has every title? Because after the match, Seth wins, and then Priest takes it off of Seth. Or do they do Shinsuke dirty? Because it was a hell of a match between Seth. Shinsuke barely wins again. Not again. He just barely wins, I mean. But he wins a title. And then Priest attack him. And then Seth can get that time off that he probably needs. He should have. He's been carrying Raw by himself, by the way, for a long time. Not anymore by himself. But, yeah. Drew and Riddle against the Vikings. No DQ match. It was just craziness. Kofi. We're we're getting Drew and Riddle against New Day once they're both cleared, essentially. I don't know. I, Yeah. Shinsuke against Rico. Uh, of course, Seth comes back out and all of that. Judgment Day, again, props to themselves. Uso's out there. JD says he's going to take the match tonight. Again, more and more uh, of feeding into that. I've kind of put a little bit of a ribbon on everything there. I touched on Adam and Raquel. They were backstage, and then Raquel later on comes out because she gets a match with Chelsea Green. And by the way, yeah, she loses. My girl does, Chelsea Green. But then she announces that next week she's getting a rematch. And nobody's, everybody's banned. Or Dom's banned, I believe. Dom's banned from the ring. Well, what about Finn? What about Priest? What about JD? So, does she win it? Uh, I don't don't know. I don't know if she wins it. I really don't. I don't think. Baszler and Starks backstage get a little something going on, whatever. I died laughing when John Cena was on Miz TV. You know how I just said 
Miss TV, not one of my favorite segments. It does what it does and needs to do. How about John Cena coming out? Nobody could see him. Nobody could freaking see him. Miz could, though. He had those special glasses on to see him. Loved it. Loved it. Match of the night, though. Gable and Gunther. Let me pause on that. If you haven't listened to Wednesday, and I don't know if you listened to Saturday before Wednesday, and then you go back and listen or whatever, uh, Donnie Bambino just says he kind of listens to him whenever he wants to. So shout out to Donnie Bambino. This was a time to put it on Gable if you're going to. But I'll stop. Are records not meaning anything anymore? You heard this if you listen to Wednesday. I'm a big fan of some records. 56 hitting streak, 56 game hitting streak in baseball. I don't think that will ever be broken. Nolan Ryan's 5,000 strikeouts. My God, pitchers don't pitch long enough to make it that long. The no-hitters, the stolen bases of Ricky Henderson, the list can go on and on. And I'm naming baseball ones. There's some in football. It's, it, it, records are there. And I know the, the whole cliche records are made to be broken. I understand. But there's some record, records... Like Cal Ripkins, I don't think anybody is ever going to play that many. It's it's building their contracts now that they have days off in a you know 162 game season. There's days off built in for you. It was 35 years. Why can't the honky tonk man be the longest reigning goddamn IC champion forever? W- what does that hurt? Do you have? A legend, somebody like that, have that title reign forever. Why did Gunther need to beat that? I understand that that was the WWF. This is the WWE. They're breaking records. A la, you know, CM Punk's was destroyed. Nikki Bella's was destroyed. You know, people that kind of part ways with the WWE now. They have these records that are, and I did do air quotes, by the way, to myself. Nobody else is watching. They have these records that are out there. Well, you've created them. This is professional wrestling. You've heard wrestlers say, we don't win titles, you know, you, you be, because of wrestling, okay? People will come at me now, and I never use the F word. Fuck, I will say that. But I don't like the F word in professional wrestling because it's not fake. It, it predetermined, yeah, but people have said that now for decades. Understand that. Realize that. Right. You, you don't win championships. So you've created this record about the Honky Tonk Man. Lasted 35 years. Gunther is the future. Gunther is the now, if you look at what he said on social media. He doesn't look in the past. Cool. I I love that. Why not leave that record then? I don't know why I'm so high on the horse about this. Just leave it go. And Gable, in this match, to transition back to Raw, this was the hottest Gable possibly is going to be. I don't know now. This was unbelievable. This is when you make that move. Put it on Gable. Do that test run to see what you're doing with Gable. Or was this a a, a little bit of a series and now Gable and Otis are going to start playing patty cake again with the Viking Raiders? God, I hope not. God, I hope not. Because you've seen in this whole Gunther series with Gable that it's unbelievable. My buddy Ryan Mosley from The Final Count said, and, and we have been saying this for a while, He doesn't believe how much of Kurt Angle is in Gable. Yeah. No shit. It's it's just what it is. I agree. This is when they should have pulled the trigger. Trigger? Trigger. Trigger. Wow. I I had a couple beers. I also had to do my oil and some lights on my Jeep up at my dad's. So I did have a couple beers before recording by myself. This This is the time, Gable. This should have been Gable time. So as much as I love the match itself, I hope this isn't the ending. I hope it's not. 
Will we see this again? How, now that Gunther has this reign, what do we do with it? When does somebody knock him off? Is it going to be Gable, or are we waiting, and it's going to be somebody else? Well, if it's going to be somebody else, this is just extending Gunther's reign for another month or two before somebody else takes it off of him. Gable had that, not like white heat is kind of, it's for heels, you know, the bad guys, essentially, in professional wrestling. But he had that white, hot energy. The, the crowd was in fucking sane for him. They, and I thought they were going to pull it off. Essentially, too, with his family there and crying baby and, oh, my God, that dad moment of the podcast. That just broke my heart. If, if that's an actor or an actress or a, a a child prodigy star or whatever you want to call it, damn, she's good. But I truly believe that was Gable's kids. And she just cried and cried and they... They shoved the camera right in her face because dad lost. Dad, the big man beat dad down. This is when Gable should have gotten it. This was the moment. That place would have freaking erupted. Overall, though, holy shit, WWE was good this week. WWE was great this week. I I, I, I loved everything. From Becky to this match. Well, you know, Becky and Trish in that steel cage. And essentially for Can Crusher's Wrestling Podcast that week, because listen, we didn't talk about SmackDown. I didn't talk about SmackDown because it was it was filler to get into payday, payback, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, again, and I'm not joking about saying payday and payback because sometimes I just forget what it's called. That match, that whole week it, it encapsulated a great WWE. Can they carry this energy on now to the next pay-per-view? Yesterday, some of the roster was over in India. They did the Super Spectacular show. Um, Will it trickle over to Peacock? I don't know. I saw that it was just going to be a show for India. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to see it. As recording, I, I don't know what the hell happened. I, I have not looked into that because, again, things are just flying by the seat of my pants tonight. But, yeah, this was this was a great week for WWE. I hope they can carry that energy on. I believe it's Fastlane, which is next. I believe so. To give that pay-per-view a bump. Do something with that pay-per-view to see if they can run with it. When's Roman come back? You guys know maybe he came back last night on SmackDown. I don't know. We'll find out. Does that push the needle again if Roman comes back and does something to carry it too fast? Like questions. Questions all over the place on WWE. But they're good questions now. To me, they are. Because a little bit ago, we're like, man, what? are they doing and i'm intrigued by a lot of stuff i really am i want to see becky and tiffany stratton i want to see what they're going to do with uh, seth and shinsuke and then priest essentially when does gunther drop this title all of these are questions and again these are kind of some of the stuff listen the, the 500th episode next week is going to have you know, as many shout outs as we have, and we'll reminisce about, you know, who came on and if they share a memory with us and, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, we're calling out to the fans as well to call 814 299 6687 and maybe throw a question in. You know, give us a shout out, say, hey, Can't Crushers, thanks a lot. I love listening to you. Congratulations on 500th episode. But I have a question for you. And then Jenks and I will spend a little bit of time on that next week as well. So we're super excited about this. This is this is a it's going to be a crazy episode number five hundred because we have all this working process of you know wrestlers calling and uh, and fans calling and stuff like that. We just really nothing is going to be scripted. It's all going to be by the seat of our pants after we go out the whole day and celebrate. By the way. 
and then just let the computer and you guys lead our talk next week by calling in. Guys, if, if this is the first time you've ever listened to the show and you want to call in, please, let me describe this a little bit before we head over to AEW and tell you a little bit. When you call in, you're going to hear me, myself, saying, hey, welcome to Can't Crushers Wrestling Podcast Hotline or something like that. It's an 800. It's not an 800 number. It's not a 900 number. It's nothing like that. It is a Google voice number. Okay, so essentially, as soon as you call, you're right to the voicemail. You have three minutes to record whatever you want to say. We'll play it next week. And then that's it. That If you want to say who you are, that would be amazing. That's really what we want. But if you just want to say, hey, this is Tim. Congratulations on 500. What's Roman Reigns doing? That'd be great. Something like that. We, we would love it. Again, we're not going to play these. I'm not going to look at these messages until next week. So do it. Again, 814-299-6687. Or I have opened it up to this as well. If you want to send like a voice memo, just send it to cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Essentially, they're going to go in the same pod anyway. So do that. This way, if you're worried about a number or whatever, this, that, the other, fine and dandy. Do whatever you want. Get your voice heard on episode 500 next week because it'll be really cool. All right. We come back. We're going to touch AEW. I have to tell you a little bit of a story that I'm super annoyed about. And, yeah, AEW right around the corner. Hey, this is the Barbie Killer, Haley Shadows. I absolutely hate Can Crushers, but I'm going to be on it, so stay tuned. Welcome back to segment three of Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Flying solo today is Mark the Mark, and I'm super excited to bring this show to you and let Sir Michael Jenks rest those golden pipes that he has for next week's 500th episode. I don't know if you guys know that. You know, essentially, I'm just telling you over and over that next week is episode 500 of Can Crushers. Um, I don't want to get into a lot about the history and everything if you haven't been with us the whole time. I'll share that story again, kind of talk, and be, be emotional next week. I, I really am. And you want to talk about emotional. I was emotional Sunday. Emotional damage right here. So... You guys have known over the last couple of weeks, TV issues, internet issues here in the old Martinez house. And we switch back to uh, another normal, I guess, TV provider, this, that, and the other. So I had to work Monday. And late night pay-per-views, maybe I'm going to let them go to the wayside. Especially when there was a pay-per-view the week before that we dubbed probably one of the top three pay-per-views of the year. (sighs) So I bought the pay-per-view. I hit the record button. So it would record. And it would be on for me once I get out of work Monday to come home. And then it was half day Monday, by the way. It was Labor Day. So just so you guys know, my God, you squeeze a lot of wrestling in, you know, about five hours. No, it was a half day. So, got the day done. Boom. Guess what? It didn't record. So, I paid for All Out. I really did. So, Tony, I, Tony Khan, speaking directly to you. I paid for All Out. I did not watch it in my house. Now, I could have repurchased it and gave Tony Khan an AEW Another $50. Thank Jesus. One of my buddies from in town had the same thoughts as me. Hey, I'm not going to watch it until Monday just because I'm out with family. They did their Labor Day on Sunday. They hung out with the kids, this, that, and the other on Monday and kind of made it a relaxing day. I reached out. I'm like, hey, Broski. Did you watch All Out? No, man. I'm actually getting ready to right now. I'm going to buy it on Bleacher Report and watch it. Cool. Uh, Bring some beer over some wings. Do you care? He's like, I thought you watched it. So I told him my story that I bought it. I hit record. It said it was recording. Then it didn't record. And you can't 
I, I went back into purchases. I went back into this. I went back into that. I, it was not there. So now I know this TV provider does not do that. So maybe down the line, everybody's going, oh, poor Mark, poor Mark. I will now know not to buy it on TV provider, provider, and then the following day buy it on Bleacher Report and just watch it there on replay. Or don't buy it, essentially, and then buy it on the replay on the TV provider and just call it a day. I thought it was, you know, I don't know, doing something to the system. If I buy it and record it, it would be good. And I didn't care if it, were, if it expired the second that I got done watching it. Didn't work that way. It expired the second it got done recording. And I was pissed when I found out I couldn't watch it at 8 o'clock Monday morning. Pissed. Thank God for broski, though. And it was nice. We actually we watched Zero Hour prior, then we bought the pay-per-view and then watched it. So Hangman wins the Battle Royal. Who else could it have been? Who else could it have been to win that pay-per-view? That Battle Royal, I mean. Who else? Come on. Willow, Sheeta, and Sky against my cousin, Mercedes Martinez, Diamante, and Athena. Um, good match. Good good match. I, I enjoyed it. The Clayman Rodman with Team Jarrett. Right. The, the Rodman guitar shot. Man, first off, Jenks and I joked last week that Rodman kind of looked in the picture that AEW put out that he was going to be at Collision, and he tweeted it, and everybody tweeted it, and he looked like the devil in the picture. He looked like the devil in the pay-per-view, too. I Listen, unbelievable basketball star. He's done a lot of things in life. He's weathered. He's weathered, to put it nicely. Starting the show, Adam Cole versus the Dark Order. Uh, yeah. I didn't take a lot of notes. I, I, I'm going to give you all thoughts off the top of my head because I was trying to, you know, hang out, talk to the kids, talk to the broski that let me watch this and so on and so forth. So I didn't want to be on my phone like, hey, man, I'm, I'm doing notes for the podcast. So this is all off of a whim, essentially. I wrote down a couple things here and there, but nothing major. So let me spoil this for you. We questioned how All Out was going to be as well, with kind of half to changing matches, shifting direction to things. And again, I'm gonna when we get to one of the matches, I want to reference Ryan once again from the final count. A lot of references, a lot of hand five high fives and scratching each other's back today. Because what we talked about Wednesday essentially kind of wraps into today of what's going on and everything. But we'll get there. Dark Order, double clothesline, MJF, boom, win, good, okay. Good. We both thought Dark Order was going to win, by the way, Jenks and I. We we thought, okay, this is going to lead to something. And the Eliminator's coming, and when we get the Dynamite, we finally get the Eliminator tournament released. And I hate that they do that, by the way. I, I hate, essentially, after the first round, they're like, oh, here's the tournament, by the way. These are the people that are paired together, but we're on to round two. I, I, I think the tournament needs to be released earlier. Because Tony even said, this is my first look, Tony Schiavone. This is my first look at the, uh, at the Eliminator tournament as well. We both had Adam Cole winning it. Adam Cole's not in it, but I do have a prediction, and I'll get there. I know, so much. People are like, oh my God, Mark, just get to it today. Get to it today. Get your comic relief of Sir Michael Jenks back so he can make some points instead of you just rambling out here. But I'm making valid points when I get to them. I'm just beating around the bush a little bit. Joe versus Shane Taylor. Oh. You know, talk about two big men slapping meat, beating the shit out of each other. I love this match. I, this, this, this is ROH wrestling to me. This is, 
I love these two working together. But, again, and I know the fans of AEW know the fans and the wrestlers of ROH, but there are new fans. I think Shane Taylor needed a little bit more introduction and more of how bad of a motherfucker he is and what he could do to Joe and it would get over a little bit more if they told a little bit more of a story. I said a little bit more a lot there, by the way. But if you go back and you're the fans of old ROH and Joe and him and all that, this was great. This was great. And it looked like it was a shoot for about, I don't know, two to three minutes of this match. I thought, oh, shit, somebody did something to one of them, and they're going to fucking kill each other. This this was great. Luchasaurus against Darby. This was just a shit fight. And I mean that good. This, this was just boom, bang, boom, bang. Just a big man throwing around a little guy, beating the snot out of him. The German suplex, holy God. God, I thought Darby was going to come up dead. And you, yeah, put that together. I, I really thought he was going to come up dead. Like, what the hell is going on? How did, how did he walk out of there? On Yeah, crazy. Lucha retains, okay? Lucha retains. Christian attacks. But I knew we were going to get Darby versus Wayne at some point. And we do. Okay? We do. Wednesday. Miro and Hobbs, again, two big men just slapping the hell out of each other. The crowd is crazy for this match. Unbelievably crazy. Meet this, meet that, meet this, meet that, meet this, meet that. I didn't think the crowd was going to be as much into this match as they were. Maybe that's what made this match because it was so good. Meet forever was a chant. Meet forever. Meet forever. Meet forever. That was a chant. I I don't know. The crowd. CJ Perry's here. Jenks and I have not talked about CJ Perry slash Lana in a long time. We didn't think it was going to happen. We thought he had left her the... His God, da, 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 da. I thought CJ has moved on to movies again or whatever she was doing. This surprised me. This was a true surprise to me that she came out. The bigger surprise is that, that Miro was essentially saying, go fuck yourself. I want nothing to do with you. So I want to see where this goes. Spoiler, I have read a little bit that not sure how long of a contract she has. I, I I don't know if it's a week by week contract or if it's maybe a couple months, but I, it doesn't sound like it's a lengthy contract that CJ is going to be around. They made reference to his wife and this, that, and the other. I don't know. It, is it just to give us that pop that she was there for a little bit? How long is Miro and Hobbs going to be going on? I would imagine she is a a focal point. In this story as we go farther, right? We'll see. We'll see. Stat versus Ruby. Soraya is out there. This, uh, the ending to this was rough. The ending with this was rough. And I don't know who, and I'm not going to point the finger at, because there was essentially four people in this match. Stat, Ruby, Soraya, and Tony Storm from underneath the ring. Tony comes out, kind of looks a little not sure where she is. And I know she's kind of a little bit ditzy right now in her character and everything. So is that what she was really going for? I don't know. And then the whole spray can and everything stat wins. I mean, we, I didn't think, I I believe, let me find the notes here. I think that we both had stat winning. It's kind of still young in her title reign comparative to Jade who had it forever. But I don't think it was time yet for Stat. And Ruby's 
I love Ruby. I, I know I'm being so – I don't want to make anybody mad today or anything like that. That's not I, – I, I, I love Ruby Riot. I love Ruby Soho. I love when Taz sings Soho, ho, 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 ho. All of that. I do. Uh, Ruby is one of my favorites. Heather Lovelace. Loved it. Shimmer. Go back. Watch some of her stuff. I just don't think – She's involved in anything. Like she's in another F word. I don't really. She's floating right now. She's floating because you see the outcasts are essentially just broken, broken. It, it, the the dynamite match coming down the line, or if it's collision or wherever it is, where the four women in it, I I wouldn't be shocked. It, it's it's paying that it's gonna be Tony against Soraya at Grand Slam, right? That's what we've predicted, and it's now lined up that way. Essentially, you guys will know more. So stat wins. This is where I want to take this hot second and talk. Starks and Danielson. Ryan asked me on Wednesday show about Collision, CM Punk, and everything like that. I think Collision is now Danielson's, if you haven't listened. This is now Danielson's to run and do what he maybe wants to with like Punk was doing on Collision. And he is going to probably be the face over there. Um, We'll see if he's with BCC much longer, if at at all, you know, because they kind of are trickled to Dynamite a lot more. Will they come over and they'll be on Collision and maybe they do a swap and maybe FTR goes back to Dynamite. I don't know. These are all trades, you know. It's not as much as a huge brand split, essentially, as WWE has, where there's a little bit of crossover. It's all of that. It really is. But my thoughts are, Danielson comes back from injury a little bit early and steps right into the role of where CM Punk was, it's going to be a strap match between Punk and Starks. Steamboat kind of still being involved because it makes perfect sense with the story that's going on. Plug and play Danielson. Danielson's been working backstage with Tony since his injury, so he kind of knows some of the stuff that's going on. So I really think Collision turns into a Danielson show. Show, 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 show. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, does he want it as much as Punk? I don't know that. I'm not Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan or whatever we want to call him today. I don't know if he's going to want it. But will he have his fingers in and, you know, messing around and doing some stuff? I really do. I think he's going to be a focal point. But uh, as I said, I don't think he's going to need to open the show and then close the last 45 minutes. I, I really don't. I think Danielson will be, you know, last 15-minute match or something like that, comparative. But maybe sprinkle him in and around the show. I missed Brian Danielson, by the way, when he was off. Just throwing that out there. I really did. So to see this match and choking him out and uh, what the hell was up with Aubrey's hair, by the way, in this match? It kind of just went all over the place. But that was brutal. Holy shit, he chokes him out. I, I did love this match. I did love this match. Probably one of my favorite strap matches. I'm not throwing FTR and the Briscoes into it because that was... Would yeah, yes, but one of my favorite strap matches I've seen in a while. This one, bloody as Christ, by the way. Kingston and Shibata against the BCC. Claudio sucks egg shirt was all in caps in my notes. I loved it. I, I love the callback to the Funker. Uh, you're gonna see all these callbacks, this, that, and the other thing. <sighs> Not a quick match so to speak, and I'm all right with that. But the ending was then quick for me. With the uppercut real quick, boom, one, two, three, match over. Like there was bigger things that were hit in that match that I thought, well, maybe it should have ended this way or ended that way. I, I don't know. Again, I'm not a promoter, not anything, a lot of booker, not a, none of these guys as a talent, whatever. I just think it ended weird with an uppercut. And I understand he was beaten down on match, so a body slam could have possibly beat him. Yes, I agree with that. But I just think it was like uppercut, one, two, three, gun. So, Kenny and Takeshita, holy shit. Kenny's dead. 
I put that. Kenny is dead. Bad suplex. Oh, my God. That's where, you know, sometimes I put uh, dots and sometimes I put commas. This time I put dots in my notes instead of commas. I probably, sh- I probably should have put a comma there because that is what I meant. When Kenny took that suplex, I, I thought he was going to die. A lot of outside stuff in this match as well. Um, chairs into a splash. About 900 false finishes in this match. This was good. This was good. But I think you can false finish too much that you're like, all right, at some point this match has to end. That ended up here for me. I was like, mm, maybe it was a little bit too much. Maybe it was a little bit too much. But Takashka gets his first singles win over Omega on AEW. Don Callis to more to come. But overall, good match. Uh, man, we predicted this one perfectly, didn't we? The Bang Bang Gang against FTR and the Bucks. The mockery to start the match. The uh, the Schneids a little bit between the Bucks and FTR. The, the crowd hated the Bucks in this match. They shit on them from the from the get go. Uh, once it all started working together, you know. But I, I just knew we both knew last week when we made the predictions that this was this was a bullet clubs to win. This really was to. Give them that, you know, shining victory over the tag team champions and probably one of the best teams in AEW. Definitely one of the best teams in AEW. One of the best teams around the world in the Bucks. Just to give them that little, you know, pat on the back. Thanks for doing all that you've been doing. And again, man, Juice Robinson. Ah, it, it, do you think he's a little deranged in real life? Like... Man, if I'm going to get hate for anything, it's probably what I just said right there. And I, I, I just there's there's times that I'm like, man, this guy is really off his rocker. He has some of the greatest facial expressions in professional wrestling, and they scare me. They legit scare the bejesus out of me. Wondering, is that his real life? Is that truly him coming out? Because you hear. Wrestling. Uh, go back to some of my spotlights with some of the youngs that I've, you know, some of the younger kids that I've had on. Some of the legends. They all say, "Oh, uh, Bob Smith." We always use Bob Smith is me times ten. Well, is Juice Robinson himself times ten? <sighs> Sometimes wrestling is your real life. Sometimes your air quotes gimmick is truly yourself. Daniel Bryant, when he was the wooden champion and the vegan champion and all that, that's him. He just multiplied that by 10 to put it that much over. Is Juice Robinson just a crazy motherfucker? Yeah. I, yes. Would I be scared shitless if I saw him down a dark hallway? Listen, if I run into Juice Robinson at a Target at noon while he's eating popcorn... And having a Slurpee from the 7-Eleven that he just left two seconds ago, I would question my well-being. I really would. Now, he's not maybe like Abdullah the Butcher crazy or anything like that, but he plays this well if he's playing it. Next match, Mox and Orange, and it's for the International Championship. Orange is a bloody mess at the end of this. I said if Cassidy wins this, the title needs to be retired. And that's probably midway through the match. I wrote that. I, I Because of everything he's done for this. I mean, we both said Mox was going to win anyway. And as you guys know, you see that Mox does win. I said, this is or to me. Because you guys faithful listeners that have listened wondered where I was with orange for a long time, just squeaking victories away, doing this. It seemed like the same match for me over and over and over and over again. And listen, I said this about the judgment day. I now like the judgment day. Am I waving their flag yet? I'm not there. I've always liked orange Cassidy. I have. 
I like his shtick. I like the hands in the pockets. I like the stupid kicks. I like the sunglasses. I like the kip-ups and all of that. I do. I, I love everything about Orange. I was getting a little tired of him, though. This is just now resurgence, his coming out party for me. Like, Orange could do no wrong in my book. And it was probably, it was definitely because of this match. But it, it I, I don't know why. And is it because he's tired? He's going to go home and take a nap? He's going to do whatever he needs to do? No, because I don't want him to nap. I don't want him to nap. I want him to do, I want him to do all this again. Mox, great win. Cool. International champion. We'll see how long this goes, what it does, so on and so forth. But Orange won this match for me. The champion is John Moxley. But for me, Orange Cassidy hit a next level in this match. It really did. All right, let's transition over to Dynamite on Wednesday. And again, right off the bat, Orange comes out crowd, probably the biggest pop of the night. For me, I, I when I watch it, I think this is the biggest pop of the night. Orange comes out. AEW told him to stay home. He's going to be here every week, and he doesn't have a catchphrase. Mox comes out of the crowd because he's getting ready for his match against AR Fox. By the way, Mox beats him. Okay, But as Mox is walking in, Orange stops, kind of looks back, and you see something. We're going to revisit this. We're going to revisit this probably down the line. And I'm all right with it. I love, I, I, I did. I love that match. I really did. So, after the match, Darby comes out, helps Fox up. Nick Wayne is alone in the back. Christian and Lucha kind of get to him. Darby's not a mentor. Yada, yada, yada. And I didn't know, again, because the Eliminator Tournament wasn't shown yet that we're getting Darby and Wayne, Nick Wayne, in this match. So not only has Darby been fighting the mogul, eliminated them, has been doing this whole thing with Nick Wayne, and we probably knew, is I'm going to jump to that match next, we probably knew that this match was going to happen. But the buildup wasn't there yet for this. There wasn't that time for this match. And I know it's a blind eliminator match. Shit could happen. They pull it out. Same thing like this and that. But I didn't know that this was going to be the main event of Dynamite. I didn't care. I did not care about this match. One, because it was part of the eliminator. Two... I think it was too early. What is Nick Wayne doing in the Eliminator? What is... Well, I, I wouldn't believe this whatsoever if, if you won it. Darby wins. All right? Spoiler if you haven't watched it. Darby wins. But, no way. No way. Whatever, whatever. I just... I'm fed up with both of these guys right now. I really am. You need to build both of them up. You need to do something else. I, I just, I'm not there. <sighs> so after all that beginning, and then I jump to the end real quick, we'll get back on target. Statlander has an open challenge. Five seconds ago, before the before this match, you've already told me that she's taking on Emi, Emi Sakura. D don't ruin that open challenge. D don't. You ruined it yourself. This is a Chris Statlander open challenge. No shit. You just told me five seconds ago that she's facing Emi Sakura. So give us a little bit of suspense to it. I I'm fine if Emi comes out. I really am. I, I don't care who would have came out. I, I really don't. But you already told me who she was fighting. I thought... Statlander was going to have an open challenge and then Sakura challenged her later or something. Did I miss something? Did, did I go wrong here? Am I too clustered in the brain? Concussions, whatever? I Just leave it as, a, as an open challenge and have it be a surprise. Did, I don't know. By the way, Stat wins a hard-fought match. There wasn't a chance in hell that Emi Sakura was going to win this. 
At least I didn't think so. But damn, this was a good match. This was a hard-fought match for her. Uh, just two different styles clashing. I liked it. I really did. Roddy and the Kingdom are in the back. Uh, wrestling gives him life. Bah, 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 bah. He had a BB gun by his side all the time as a kid. A BB gun. He's going to shoot his eye out. I hope it was a Red Rider BB gun, by the way. Spoiler, by the way, as I say this, pop into my head because this came through. Steel City Con is first weekend in December. If, if you ever want to go to a, a Comic Con or anything like that in your in and around the Pittsburgh area, Ralphie is going to be there. I'm going to be there because the wife wants to be there. We're going to go meet Ralphie. Now my goal is, this is late in the show. This is another reason why I essentially saved AEW for the last end of this because, you know, we're we're about an hour and a half in, roughly. Kel will not be listening to the wrestling portion of this. My goal is to get Kelly in a bunny suit to take a picture with Ralphie. So, if you can help me find a bunny suit, I don't want to buy it. So if anybody's out there, you know, hit up the email, cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Let me borrow this bunny suit so I can put Kelly in it and have her take a picture with Ralphie at the beginning of December. I'll I'll wash it. Uh, if it needs dry cleaned, I'll dry clean. Is dry cleaning a still thing anymore? I don't I don't even know if we have a dry cleaner within fifty miles of here. But nonetheless, I, I'll take care of it. I, I do need a bunny suit for the beginning of December. Put Kelly in it. Uh, so it's got to be an adult one, clearly, but not too big. Maybe I don't know. We'll we'll put a pin in this, and you know she's. 5'3", guys. So I'll, I'll give you that. All right, she's 5'3". So help me find a bunny suit. Maybe if I have to roll it up a little bit. But we, we need to have Kelly in a bunny suit. Don Callis on commentary for the Sex Gods against Aussie Open. No chance in hell I thought the Sex God was going to win this match. I'll, I And it's not because even some funny business happened and Jericho wanted to get the pin on Aussie Open and, and whatever. And man, are, they're just, are they doing Aussie Open dirty right now? I mean, MJF and Adam Cole, clearly, probably the tag team right now. Sorry, Jenks, over FTR that everybody is clamoring about in AEW. Even the Bucks or the Bang Bang Gang or anything like that. And it duly noted that they, they are. Listen, they're two of the top guys. <laughs> that was a pun. In AEW. But what is Aussie Open leaving again soon? That they're, they're this now need to put people over. You know, why can't you throw them a bone and give them a win? Would it have mattered if, you know, Jericho didn't get the win and they still had the whole Sammy thing? You know, Jericho could have came in and got the loss when Sammy was just about to get the pin and you still can have that turn, whatever, whatever. And Callus, yes, has something to do with this because he's got an announcement next week. And there's a picture because later on in the show, he comes back out. There's a new painting he's going to reveal, this, that, and the other. It's Sammy. Sammy's done. His actions in this match, to me, mentally said Sammy is joining Callus. And we've been saying this for a while now. We have. That Sammy's joining Callus. It's it's inevitable, right? Am I am I wrong? It's got to be. It's got to be Sammy. By the way, the Starks vignette promo, whatever you want to call it. So I don't think it was a promo because promo. You kind of this was more of a vignette. This was fucking awesome. This was to me. You know how we talk that the WWE has. Some of the greatest productions. I mean, we we talk about the Bray vignette that they had and everything, and even even back in the day ones because Razor Ramon popped in my head, and even stupid ones like Outback Jack, and just things that you think hmm, they they could have done this, but they, they did it. They did it great. There's the production team in WWE is 
amazing. But we're talking about AEW right now. What they did for this Ricky Starks vignette was probably some of the best I've ever done. Holy Christ, did I like this one. I really did. This was great. If you haven't watched it and you really don't know what you're going to watch uh, of a Dynamite or anything, make sure you watch this vignette. It was what it needed to be. MJF comes out, talks about defending the ROH championships. He's got to wrestle again on the 20th. Oh, my God, that's Grand Slam. That's in his hometown. He's the hometown scumbag. Yada, yada, yada. And that's when Joe comes out. And this is where I will stop. And I'll put the next match in as well. Because this is just going to encapsulate everything that is going to go on. Okay, this is my spoiler up until Grand Slam Eliminator Tournament. You guys will know more by the time we rejoin next week and we'll talk about it. But you notice Max has a sore neck. So does Roddy. He's got a sore neck. Roddy and Joe are in separate sides. The finals is going to be Joe against Roddy. And Roddy's going to be put on the shelf, okay, by Joe. Another neck injury. He's going to be out for a while again. You're not going to see Roddy Strong again for a while. We were thinking this is going to be all like Adam Cole thing, and it may. It may be an Adam Cole thing, losing the the tag titles to the kingdom, right? But this Roddy Strong thing is actually an MJF thing because MJF sore neck, Roddy Strong, what if it is a sore neck? He's selling it like Bobby the Weasel Heenan did for a long period of time, almost like Iron Mike Sharp and his, you know, his wrist and forearm injury. Oh, Joe is going to work over Roddy's neck so much that it's going to get into Max's head, MJF's head, when he has to fight each other. Now, will Joe win the AEW championship? I guess you have to wait for the Grand Slam prediction show that will we have down the line, probably in like two weeks. Essentially, next week is what it is. I'm an idiot. Next week, because we'll do our predictions then, as well in segment three. But this is a Joe story, a Joe Roddy story, a Joe Max story. Nothing to do with Adam Cole. The Kingdom does. Because they'll take those titles off. Adam Cole. And MJF. Like I said, Strong got the win against Trent. Tony and Renee, man, this was just... I, I don't know what the hell has happened. I, I don't know. Tony Storm, just what... I I don't know what's going on with her. Hangman, talking about winning the Royal Rumble. Swerve comes out. Why are you making the donation to these people. We find out that Hangman was a teacher. Yada, yada, yada. I, this just... To me, this seems like it's rehashed. Like, didn't Adam do this with somebody else uh, about two years ago? Like, why? Why Why Swerve? What are we going to do with Swerve? Are we going to push Swerve up into the upper echelon now? He made reference that he's going to be the first black AEW champion. Heavyweight champion. And all fine and dandy with that. I, as Jenk said, he's the dirty motherfucker. He didn't say it like that. I just put it in my own words right now. And I like what Swerve's doing. Why with Adam? Because he is a top guy, essentially. But he's kind of lost in the shuffle right now. So just give him something to do. And you're going to get the hate because he donated to charity? A school charity to kids? I mean, that's... That's waiting, if you get the wrong wrestling fan, that's waiting out in the parking lot with a tire and iron type of deal shit. Like I, I, that, this is a storyline that, if taken the wrong way, some crazy ass person is, is going to go after Swerve. I, I, I don't know. I, am I still living in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, because some people can't split reality and wrestling? Yeah, I am. I am. Because shit, it doesn't need to be the It's 2023. Watch some YouTube stuff. There's a lot of people out there that can't split reality wrestling, reality 
the Real Housewives, reality Big Brother, reality Survivor. Like they they just don't understand. And if you get the wrong person, God swerve. There's nothing to do with him. Some just idiot is upset because he donated money to a school charity. Adam Page. You know, he's a good guy. And then that main event that is nonsense. So, yeah. I want to know what you guys thought of the week of wrestling. I really thought it was a great week of wrestling from myself and Michael Jenks saying, we might be down that slide. Both companies brought it. Both companies were like, hey, we're not taking time off. This isn't going to be the dead time of wrestling. We have shit going on. AEW doesn't normally have a time like they're setting up for Grand Slam and then they have next pay-per-view and everything. After SummerSlam pay-per-view or premium live event or whatever WWE wants to call them anymore, it seems that you know WWE has always been on a downward climb. I don't think they are. I think they got a lot of cool stuff in the hopper. I, I think we're going to get some swerves, and I don't mean Strickland. I just think some swerves down the line across the board to keep us invested until we get to, you know, essentially Rumble and that WrestleMania track to WrestleMania 40. It's crazy. You know, beginning of September, we're already looking ahead to the road to WrestleMania at Rumble. I don't know if I've been this excited about what WWE has been doing in the last couple of years. I I thoroughly listen, I still fast forward stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's the it's the nature of the beast. A three hour show, a two hour show, a two hour show, <sighs> social media, this, that, and the other thing. There there's times that it's just there's not enough time in a lifetime, let alone a week, to catch up on everything. But if you get the right bits and pieces, you're you're excited to see Becky at NXT. I'm stoked about that. Roman's next person. Really, who is going to beat Gunther if they didn't pull the trigger on Gable that night? AEW, AEW. Is it going to be Max and Joe? Is Joe the formidable opponent that's going to take the title off of Max? And then what the hell happens then? How long does Mox hold on to that international championship? These are all questions. If you guys have answers to any of these, again, either drop us an email, drop us a voice message on the email at cantcrusher69 at gmail.com. We'll play it next week. Or for the 500th episode, you know, say congratulations for episode 500 and then ask us a question about that. Next week, we'll put two heads together. Jenks will be back. He'll be excited to be here. He'll chat a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, we'll put two and two together, drinking beers next week together for the first time since Jenks has been on the podcast, like in person doing this podcast together. I'm excited. I really am. Off to Erie next week. But, of course, I'm going to Pittsburgh. As you guys are listening to this, cheer on my Panthers. Guys, shorter episode this week, but it was fun. I, I, I actually like this where I got my thoughts rolling and I just wanted to share a little bit and we hope Sir Michael Jenks is well for episode 500 save this to the end and it's not because it's just because uh, I wanted to talk a little bit guys it is suicide prevention month September so as we said last week emails open that phone lines open uh, I will check them we'll listen we're here. Drop us a DM. You're not alone. This has been a horrible week for me. Work-wise, other things-wise, personal life. Um, everything happened years ago. Some even a couple decades ago. But it it rekindles itself during this time. And it's you can't move past it. it it's something, it's a traumatic event. And I know I shut down a little bit this week. I have. But I know I have two people in this house that are here to make sure 
Nothing happens. They're always with me. I have this outlet that people have reached out and said, we love you, Mark. Thanks for talking openly and and telling us essentially, you know, your life here on Can Crushers. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and all that. I have janks. I have friends. I have, you know, everything. And I want you to know the same thing that, hey, you are fine. We love you. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them because you never know.